It is header time, baby. So we partner with Ice Engine Works to supply us with their product, which are these Lego blocks for fabricators, essentially, to help us assist in designing the headers on the form of the Supra. So what these do is they, they snap together. They come in all different uh, center lines and sizes. So we are gonna be running a two inch OD Inconel tube. Um, here we have the inch and seven eighths but we need a two and a half inch center line and they only make the two and a half inch center line in the inch and seven eighths blocks. So that's perfectly fine. That's what we're gonna use. So you can design your header system based on these blocks and get yourself either 100% of the way there or very close. So for us, we have a very tight area to work with on the driver's side for the headers. And these blocks are gonna assist Dominic in designing that and also helping us not over order a bunch of bends and uh, not utilize all of the Inconel product that, we're, that we would have to order. So for us, or for me, I should say, Inconel is extremely expensive and you only wanna to have to order as much as you need. So this is gonna help us with that situation and also just kinda of get Dom a perfect idea of how these headers are gonna be designed because we have to do 26 inches of tube per uh, header, or 26 inches of tube per primary, and it is 26 times five all the way through is gonna be over 11 feet of tube on each side uh, between the engine and the front frame rail. So there's not a lot of room there. And also on a driver's side, we have the accessories like the alternator on the side of the engine and also the steering shaft coming through. So there's almost no room. So Dom's gonna have a heck of a time designing it, but big thanks to Ice Engine Works for stepping up and supplying us with these blocks because it's gonna assist us in uh, figuring out what design is gonna work best and how to make each runner the exact 26 inches that we need. So this is the header installation or the Judd installation manual from Judd. And this tells you what the primary length is, the collector size, uh, length and ID and all that. So this is what we're looking at. This is what they recommend. Primary length 26 inches by two inch ID. The collector is six inches, which we actually shortened a little bit for when we had uh, printed metal 3D print hours. And uh, then the tailpipe's three inch on the way out, which is uh, what we did. So pumped on that, and uh, I'll see what Dom can come up with in this tight area on the side of the motor here. So this is the plug that goes into the header flange. Uh, and this is what holds the uh, caps, or I guess the first piece into the header flange that you can build off of. Uh, so it's basically, you know, pretty traditional design here. It's just uh, some rubber uh, smushed together that expands to hold inside when you crank this down. And then the ice engineering plastic piece slides right onto the top of here. And that's how you start the project. So we already have our modeling block adapters into the header flange and we installed the first blocks onto the block adapter. And this is the start of the header design. So now we have all of these different blocks and radiuses and sizes to choose from. So we have everything from a uh, two and a half inch center line, three inch center line, four inch center line, and six inch center line to design the headers. Um, plenty of blocks here. So we should be able to get a one full side designed before moving on to the next. And that'll be sweet for us because this kit will allow us to kind of design everything on the car and then you know, hopefully mandrel bend as much as possible, limiting the amount of welds that Dom's gonna have to do. And also help us with uh, ordering the least amount of quantity of ink and all that we, meet, that we need because that stuff is pretty expensive. And uh, when you're buying bends that you don't need, that's like two, $250 per bend of two inch OD and 035 sidewall. So it's definitely expensive stuff. So it'd be nice using the Ice Engines kit so that we can kind of save ourselves some additional costs on the Inconel product. So we got our temporary steering shaft in here. We didn't have the right parts to finish that job, so we just stuck something in there that'll be usable for now, uh, just so that Dom knows what his area reference is. So each primary has to be 26 inches long to the collector. And that is 26 inches. That is a lot. That is a lot of tube. 
So over. What'd you say, Don? Yeah, that's over 10 feet of tube for each side, side of the engine, which is freaking crazy. So, or it sounds crazy. So Dom's got, <laughs> Dom's got his work cut out for him. <laughs> What makes it hard, even harder on this side, besides the steering shaft, is also the alternator is off the side here. Oil pump, water pump. Uh, so this is definitely the harder of the two for sure. But before we get into the design of the header, we have to fixture the collectors underneath the car in the position where we want them. So we're gonna get these fixtured underneath the car on both sides, and then we can start designing the header for real and seeing what it's gonna look like over here. So that's gonna be the jig for the collector. It's gonna get bolted to the bottom of the car or fixtured to the bottom of the car so we can make, start making the pipe. All right guys, we are starting to make some progress on the header with ice engine blocks. It's just a trial and error process here of seeing what design will work the best. Each block is one inch long and we need to do 26 inches. Now, including the header flanges, we have about an inch. So we need 25 blocks per primary from the distance of the header flange to the collector. So that's what we gotta work with, that kind of length. Obviously limited space and trying to make sure that we can still get to some of the parts to be able to take things apart without having to remove the entire engine. It's just one of those deals where, you know, we just might have to pull the engine out to do everything. So that's just the way it is sometimes. Like I said, super tight. So Dom has this one looping up to get to the top of the collector. And then nine is looping down and then up and around to get right to the collector next to it. The ice engine work blocks are doing their job aiding in this design. One more to go. Well, on the driver's side anyway. But this one should be decently, might be the only tough thing on the last one is to try to keep it at that 26 inch length since this is the furthest one from the collector. So we're gonna have to do it as straight as we can. All right, the final. There it is. Snap. That's it. The line off. It just makes it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you're, stre you're stretching these couple areas for sure. I mean, it's just barely made the 26 on the furthest one out. It's really, really close. But when we uh, transition this to metal, It'll be a little bit easier to um, to go more direct to the collector. So, uh, but man, dude, this boy's coming in clutch for sure. Look at this baby. Header is one header done, design wise. Damn, it does. It's pretty cool, I guess. It does. I was hoping I could make it look cooler, but... Well, at least there's some symmetry. Yeah. It ten... actually came out really good. That's like, 10 feet of pipe. I know. It actually, like, the air gap in between all of them is actually really nice. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't even know how that worked out. <laughs> now you really get the picture of how tight it is in here. I mean, look, there is literally no room left to put any more tube in here. And this is the number nine cylinder that loops goes up and basically snakes down into this. So it's, it's, it looks like an octopus in here, but Dom, like I said, Dom did a great job in making sure every single runner was 26 inches long. So it worked out. And the number six all the way in the back pretty much comes off and runs straight into, into the collector. So the collector is in the perfect spot so that the furthest runner away still has the 26 inches. It doesn't have to be any longer than that. And that these really difficult ones, uh, he added just barely enough room to me to massage that baby in there. So. Now we can still change things up a little bit when we transition it to the Inconel two inch ID. It's still gonna be tighter than hell in here, but it's looking good. It's looking good for when we transition to the Inconel metal. 
So we're running the WiseFab front and rear suspension components on the GR Supra, or the form of the Supra. And on the uh, rear forward arm, it has a multi-adjustable uh, feature on it, which you have to weld into place, which is really cool. So Dom is doing that right now. So it has three different holes to choose from, and that'll help you dial in your traction uh, slash bump steer. Uh, we haven't messed with it yet, so I don't know what the bump steer situation is on this chassis or on this rear subframe. I know Wisefab does a really good job of helping all of that out, so that'll help us fine tune the car and get as much traction out of this thing as possible. I'm sure we'll be messing with uh, each of those adjustments at one point or another here. Dom finished welding the WiseFab uh, piece in, adjustment piece. So now we are finalizing the WiseFab arms. I got all of our titanium hardware here. Uh, we're gonna bolt everything in. We're gonna have to take this stuff back out and we need to add some copper style anti-seize. So for now, we're just gonna kind of loosely put everything in. We'll take it all back out, coat it, and put the proper torque specs on it. But right now we're just gonna get everything kind of fitted in there and um, make sure it's all good. We are almost done. Almost done bolting on the WiseFab rear suspension kit. So we're actually getting a new arm. Uh, so this is for the OEM Super Style, which has a divorced spring. And we're gonna be getting one that um, bolts more like our H6, where it's just an arm that contours straight over and it just has the uh, pickup point for our BC racing suspension to bolt to, so it's not a divorce spring, it's a regular coilover. Uh, we're gonna wait to bolt the hubs in. We're, probably, we're gonna take all this stuff off uh, pretty quickly as soon as we start doing the, as soon as we start doing the center lock conversion kit uh, that we have to make some custom parts for or order some custom parts for. Then we'll take all this stuff off and Dom is going to do a little machining for all that. Once we get the hubs pressed in, and a center lock kit all sorted out, then uh, that'll be on for good on uh, moving on to the next project. But I don't know when we're gonna get to that just yet. We got plenty of shit to do still. All right, it's sway bar time, boys. <laughs> that thing's already wrong, dude, damn. Yeah, wow, it's gonna be Holy. like, it's gonna, yeah, the whole thing is gonna be the length of this, pretty much. I mean, it could be slightly longer. So this is, this, they call the sway bar blade or the Genesis Technologies sway bar blade, I guess. And it allows you to change the softness or stiffness by moving this. And allows it, it's just for a quick adjustment at the track so you don't have to keep changing sway bar bars in and out, which takes a lot longer. So you just loosen up one Allen key, uh, change it to the direction that you want and uh, stiffen or soften, and you head back out there and it's a nice track setup. A little rough cut from the bandsaw. So these are gonna be the mounts for the rear sway bar. Just rough cut right now. Dom's so putting them back into the vise. Get them trimmed up, looking sweet. I'm using a face mill to clean up the sides and get rid of this little step right there. So this will come out like, looking almost like a mirror finish. Hey, 
damn, dude. Definitely a mirrored, mirrored finish. Yeah, upside down. Sick. Since we don't have a metric set of drill bits. No, we don't have like an end mill or something to counter bore. Whoa. It's a counter bore. All right, so we don't, we don't have a metric counter bore. Dom's gotta bust this baby out. Uh, Cause now we can't, oh, that's, well the back side of the socket fits, but the front side of the socket does not fit in the hole. So we just gotta counter board a little bit more. Just make some clearance for a socket so we can get the bolts in and out of there. And we'll be good. So Dom's gonna make some Delrin bushings to go in here. Uh, we're gonna run an inch and an inch and a quarter sway bar so we have the different sizes that we need for this thing. Uh, and then we have to make the arms to go out to here but we are gonna replace this wise fab lower. Uh, so we have a lower control arm that doesn't have the divorced spring uh, location. Today we are gonna finish the rear sway bar. So. The Wise Fab kit comes with lower control arms that uh, have the divorced spring setup, and we want the coil over setup. So we got on the phone with Wise Fab and got these new lower control arms that just came in. Now we can make our tabs and mounts to finish up the sway bar um, that will come off of this spring, and we're going to run the true coil over setup, which is more motorsport style, and get rid of these lower control arms. So if you are buying a Wise Fab kit for the A90 Supra and you want this style, and you plan on transitioning over to the coilover setup, just make sure you let them know and they'll get you taken care of. So these are the sway bar arms and they all come in, well Dom already trimmed this one down, uh, but they come in steel and aluminum. Um, they come like 20 something inches long, so then you cut them down to what your length is and our length is probably gonna be about nine and a half, ten 10 inches. Dom put the old Dom spec on our sway bar arm here. This thing came out sick with some speed pockets, chamfered all the edges, and put a nice little angle cut on this to give us a little bit more down clearance for the Heim joint. <laughs> So we still have to put the bearing in here, but this is the back cap and this is how you adjust it. So basically you just loosen up this Allen head on the back side and you just twist the blade. This is as soft as it'll get laying flat. And this is as hard as it'll get um, vertical. And then you can just adjust back and forth from there. Dom finished up the sway, rear sway bar links that will bolt to the lower control arm, the rear lower wise fab control arm. Sway bar blade all finished up here. Looking proper. So this go on the end of this, just like that. And then this will bolt to the lower control arm. And Dom put his dope touch to it, of course. This was a full hex bar that he just cut down on the lathe and then tapped, drilled, tapped, and made it looking all pro. And 
the rear sway bar is officially done. After we throw some blue paint back on these rear lower control arms, things done. All right, guys, the sway bar is officially dialed in. Full DOM spec from the sway bar end links to the Neon Genesis blade to the handmade mounts for the sway bar itself, the custom pockets. Steering rack spacers, here we go. Thread, the combination, A, D, six, metric, metric. All right, Dom Spec. This is our Dom Spec spacer for the steering rack. Getting a lot closer. Dom just finished the rod end spacers that are in the wise fab knuckle. Um, trim this down so that we have everything centered with this long spacer. Now we just gotta connect the two with some 7075 and uh, we'll have some steering, officially. Seventy seventy five, looking good. We have steering, baby. Everything is connected in a front end. Let me show you guys all the work that Dom put into this thing. So since the steering rack is offset to this side, we had to make a big spacer, which Dom made out of chromoly here, uh, put a nice hex on it, turned it down as much as possible since it's chromoly, it's a little bit heavy. We're using Mark V Supra tie rods. And then to tie everything together, we're using a 5A time joint. Uh, 5 8 threads, and I think this is M14, 1.5. Uh, this 7075 aluminum came out really nice. And then this side, we're using the Wise Fab spacer that Dom had to turn down a little bit to get the proper length out of this. Um, another steering arm here. Everything's tied in, man. I don't think we're gonna need that much angle for <laughs> for time attack, but we are gonna use some of it for some drifting when we do take this thing drifting. So it's there when we need it, that's for sure. 